It's over 11 miles of coaster track that makes up the best skyline in the game. Six machines that surpass the 200 foot mark. And if we zoom in, you'll find the world's first Hyper, Giga, and Stratocoaster in just a single frame. It's considered the roller coaster capital of the world. Earning that title took a combination of guts and planning unlike anything we've ever seen. The mindset was simple. We'll give them the best, but let's make sure it's a good fit. Not just for today, but for decades to come. That type of thinking, however, has created an even bigger problem. A collection so strong and packed with so much history, no one can seem to agree on which one should be removed when making room for that next record breaker. So get ready because today, I'll show you how this current timeline of coasters helped shape Cedar Point into the roller coaster capital of the world. In 1963, Cedar Point was in desperate need of a roller coaster. They had recently opened the Skyride and the Cedar Point Railroad. But even with these great additions, something was missing. They were contacted the Philadelphia Toboggan Company, a leader in the industry that knew how to build a winner. Then looked to the local high school for inspiration on a new name, and in 1964, Blue Streak opened to the public. Standing just 78 foot tall, it wasn't exactly a record breaker, but impressive it was. The out and back layout paired with the bench seats and the buzz bar restraints would provide solid air and convince Ace to award Blue Streak as a coaster classic. Though that award would be rescinded after the park replaced those restraints with a new design, but even with the new safety upgrades, Blue Streak packs solid air and it's still a great ride thanks to the attention it gets from the park's maintenance team. With an original cost of just $200,000, I'd have to say this was money well spent. 1969 saw the addition of the park's first hyper coaster, the Cedar Creek Mine Ride. This was the first of many coasters that would be constructed by Arrow for Cedar Point. It featured two lift hills and a steel track bolted to a wooden structure. While it may not be the most thrilling ride in the park, it offers a great experience for the entire family. And I gotta admit, its perfect setting in Frontier Town is really hard to pass up when you're walking by. Nineteen seventy six was a big year for both the park and Arrow with the addition of Corkscrew. Cedar Point had a new star attraction and the world got its first coaster to feature three inversions. It was also Arrow's first custom looping coaster, a model that will become so popular over the next few decades you can find one at nearly every park you visit today. It's far from a best ride in the park, but its presence on the midway is hard to overlook especially the last two years, after Cedar Point gave those aero trains a throwback paint job to its glory days. Not even two years later, Cedar Point called aero again. Corkscrew gave the park a taste for breaking records, but it was Gemini that would change the park forever. You see, it had to be the tallest, fastest, and the steepest, but that wasn't enough. It should race too. I'm not sure those in charge had any idea what they had just started. From this point on, no park was going to steal the spotlight from Cedar Point. Gemini was a huge hit and it opened to rave reviews, but the claim records of the tallest, fastest, and steepest were challenged by some. But the most interesting was the record of being the tallest. You see, Gemini was scheduled to open in May of 1978 at 125 foot tall, and Loch Ness Monster from Busch Gardens Williamsburg was to open in June at 130 foot tall. Had Gemini opened on time, it would have claimed the record for a few weeks, but a bad weather storm caused delays in construction, allowing Loch Ness Monster to open in June, 11 days before Gemini. Cedar Point continued to claim the record and it still does to this day. And though Nessie is taller, Gemini does have the bigger drop. The following year, they would give Intamin a call and add Junior Gemini, which is currently named Wilderness Run. 
Coming in at 19 foot tall, this was far from a record breaker, but it did give the park a solid junior coaster. The park was in need of another coaster to add to its lineup, and the Aero Suspended model seemed like a perfect fit. The design was fairly new to the world and only a few had been built. The thought of riding beneath the track swinging back and forth was exciting to guest. And while it didn't break all sorts of records, it was a huge hit that packed a great family thrill. Nineteen eighty nine was the last dance for Arrow and Cedar Point. Magnum XL two hundred would change the park, Arrow, and the roller coaster community forever. Just two years prior, the custom looper down the road at Kings Island claimed world records for the tallest at 148 feet and the first coaster ever built to feature six inversions. Aero may have constructed them both, but Magnum was an entire new breed. They deleted all six inversions, but built it 57 foot taller. Giving the world its first hyper coaster and proving to everyone you didn't need a loop-de-loop -loop to have the best coaster ever built. The year was 1994 and whether anyone knew it or not, that huge door at Cedar Point that Arrow opened, well it was shut and now completely sealed. There was a new kid on the block that really came out swinging, and Cedar Point did what they do best. They called B&M and placed an order for the tallest, fastest, and longest inverted coaster in the world. And just like that, they had another winner on their hands. Even adding a signature Cobra roll to make sure they match Kings Island's six inversion machine that was built seven years prior. 26 years later, it still draws long lines and it demands your attention when walking down that midway. At this point, it almost seems like Cedar Point had started planning another coaster before construction was even finished on Raptor. The collection was getting really strong and they opened up the portfolio to find what was missing. A stand-up would fit the ticket, and you already know what the recipe was. It had to be the tallest, fastest, and longest of its kind ever built. Originally, the name Banshee was trademarked, only to be changed at the last minute to Mantis. Over the years, the standing restraints started to lose their popularity, and the floorless design gained traction. So in 2015, the coaster would get new paint, trains, and even a name change. Rougarou was born. A quick call to Vekoma for a small-scale family coaster would fill a much-needed void just before the end of the century. The new millennium was here, and to think, in just a few short decades, Cedar Point went from being desperate for attention to being credited with starting a modern-day coaster war. The bait was there but no one really wanted to take it. Sure, you had a few copycats and a few that wanted just enough to edge the stat sheet. But the truth is that 10 years later, the world's first hyper was still winning awards for the best coaster in existence. Cedar Point grew tired of the war they created. No one else wanted to play. It was the end of the road and they were ready to deliver the knockout blow to their own creation. From this point on, Cedar Point would have to look in the mirror if they wanted to see their biggest competition. And just like that, Millennium Force was born. 
Sure, you had a tall shuttle coaster on the west coast, but Millie was unlike anything the world had ever seen before. An engineer in Marvel that shattered the previous record for the world's tallest full circuit coaster by over 50 feet. Hidden speeds of 93 miles per hour would require a level of precision in the track work unlike anything we had seen in coasters of the past. I could talk to you all day long about that huge first drop, the overbanked turns, tunnels, speed, and that perfect placement on the edge of Lake Erie. But a ride of this importance deserves to have its own spotlight video on my channel. And I've got so much footage of Millie I've never posted, so I look forward to putting that one out soon. After this, you would think that Cedar Point was ready to relax for a few years. Maybe plant some extra flowers or build a new restaurant, but no. Intamin had just designed a new launch system that was used on Volcano from King's Dominion, along with a new inverted impulse coaster. This new launch system was quickly gaining attention and Cedar Point took notice. They placed their order for the tallest and fastest impulse coaster in the world. But this, however, was just a distraction. You see, they had already started construction on a secret project that would prove to be the boldest move and the biggest gamble in the park's history. Well before Wicked Twister would open to the public, the park had already poured the footers for their secret coaster and they covered them up to hide them before the 2002 season kicked off. With everyone running to Millennium Force and Wicked Twister, it really helped to hide what was in store for the 2003 season. These machines were evolving in ways most people could have never imagined. The construction of wood coasters nearly halted, and these new steel machines were going up like clockwork. Chain lifts were being replaced with fast cable drives. Headache-inducing corkscrews were being deleted, and tall moments of airtime were added. The overall height always got the hype, and with all the recent advancements in launch systems, why not give the world what they really want? The world's first strata coaster and 10,000 horsepower. I don't care how many roller coasters you've rode and how much you love them. Getting in line for the very first time on Top Thrill Dragster almost certainly made you question what you were about to do. I mean, if it wasn't enough you were about to be launched from 0 to 120 miles an hour and climb 420 feet, you also had to deal with hearing loud drag car engines rumbling. But no matter how nervous you are, the second that 10,000 horsepower kicks in, you have not a care in the world. What if we put the record zone hold for this one and just put all the focus in building one of the best machines we've ever created? We could put it over in Frontier Town right beside Mean Streak, give it a cowboy theme and name it Maverick. And that's exactly what they did. Setting it just 105 foot tall, it was half the height of Magnum, a third the height of Millennium Force, and less than one fourth the height of their last edition top thrill dragster. But the real question, did it live up to Cedar Point's standard of excellence? You bet it did. Chopping those supports close to the ground and packing in lots of rapid fire transitions had many enthusiasts arguing that this was one of Intamin's best creations, and it easily ranks near the top of Cedar Point's awesome collection. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Going to a theme park's a complete experience that starts at the front gate. You don't see it very often, but there's just something special about getting to the entrance and having that perfect coaster flying over top you. It's just a feeling that makes you feel like you're missing out, and you want to get into the park as fast as you can. Gatekeeper does just that for the park. It's kind of hard to explain, but just as that train approaches those keyholes, I can't help but to stop and stare. It has my full attention, and I don't notice anything else around me. But the second it passes back by me, I just want to fly through that gate as fast as I can. It gives the park that rare wing seat with nothing above or below you. The color scheme is perfect in my opinion, and it featured the world's tallest inversion when it opened. The more I study this lineup at Cedar Point, the more I start to realize how much planning goes into each new addition to park ads. They don't just go for the record breakers. 
It's also about delivering dependable machines that can also operate quickly and move lots of people in a short amount of time. It's no secret that B&M can deliver in all three of those areas. Even better, they had a blueprint that Cedar Point had yet to take advantage of. A real crowd pleaser. It was one that was proven and ready to break some records. How does tallest, fastest, and longest dive coaster in the world sound? And these machines seem to always be so popular. I mean, it's just something I can't quite wrap my head around. Rolling over the top was a great way to get things moving, but then everyone wanted that instant acceleration. And now, let's put a hold and break at the peak so you can just chill for a few seconds and prepare yourself for that big drop you're about to experience. You know, I remember my first trip to Cedar Point in 2017 like it just happened yesterday. We spent three days at the park. Aside from riding all these adrenaline pumping coasters, we made sure to get the full experience by staying at the Hotel Breakers. Spent some time on the beach and we ate at all the restaurants. As the making of this video, it's the single best trip I've taken to a theme park. But as we left for Kings Island, I remember thinking to myself, Cedar Point feels like a huge jigsaw puzzle. And just as you reach for the last piece, you notice it's not there. RMC was quickly becoming the hottest manufacturer in the game, and Cedar Point seemed to be waiting on the sidelines. What most people didn't realize was that they were about to unveil their greatest masterpiece to date. And what better place to build it than right beside Maverick in Frontier Town? Not only is it one of the best coasters I've ever conquered, it's located at one of the greatest parks ever created. Which is why finally getting a chance to make that climb up the lift hill with my son beside me made me feel like the luckiest person on the planet. You faced one of your biggest fears that day, Steel Vengeance Row 12. I promised you a front row ride, and I tried my best but I failed and we were auto assigned Row 12. You made the decision to pull it down on your own and I've never seen you hold on tighter than you did coming down that first drop. But it only took about 10 seconds for all that fear to disappear. And for the rest of the ride, you had the biggest smile on your face I've ever seen. And Maddie, next year you'll finally be tall enough to ride the one coaster you've dreamed about for so long. And I promise you, it'll be equally as special to me.